In today's video, we'll talk about how discounts and valuation caps work for convertible notes, pre-money safes, and post-money safes. Hi, I'm Steve Morris, and I use this Startup SOS channel to provide practical how-to advice for new entrepreneurs who plan to build a growth company using investor funding. So we talked in general about how convertible notes, pre-money safes, and post-money safes work in a previous sequence of videos. I'll put a link to that up in the corner. These are all examples of convertible securities. And that means they're a way for an investor to provide funding to your startup early on with a fairly simple legal agreement that doesn't involve a lot of, of uh, legal expenses. But it's money that later then converts into stock. Convertible notes and safes don't have to have both a discount and a valuation cap, but typically they do. They'll usually have both. And those two things, the discount and the cap, uh, work together to determine that later, when the money converts into stock because of a priced round that happens later, basically what the holder of the note or the safe get to do is to look at what stock price the discount would imply, look at what stock price the cap would imply, and they get to choose the lower one. So they pay the lowest amount for the stock, hence for their money invested, they get the maximum number of shares. So the easiest way to explain this is probably to use an example. So let's say a note or a safe has a 20% discount. We have to talk about that priced round in the future that's going to convert uh, the note or the safe into stock. So let's say the founders own a million shares of stock in their company and there are 200,000 shares that are allocated for the option pool. So that's a total of 1.2 million shares. So at some point down the road after the note investment and the safe investments, there is a priced round and the investors in that round assign a pre-money valuation to the company of just to create an example, let's say $6 million. So what's the stock price that those investors will pay? It's simply a matter of calculating dollars per share. $6 million divided by 1.2 million shares, $5 is the price of the stock. So how much does the discount imply that the holder of the note or the safe will pay? Well, it's 20% discount, so it's, it's simply a 20% discount on that $5 price. So you take 20% off of $5 and you've got a $4 price. So that's the first option that they might pay would be $4. But now the question is, will the valuation cap give them a lower price? If it does, they'll pick that. Let's say you've got a convertible note or a pre-money safe with a $5 million valuation cap. Same exact round, founders have a million shares, 200,000 options, so 1.2 million shares of stock, 6 million pre-money. Well, a $5 million pre-money cap allows the holder of the note or the pre-money safe to calculate the price using the cap of 5 million instead of 6 million. So let's do that math. Now, instead of 6 million divided by 1.2 million shares, it's 5 million divided by 1.2 million shares. And that is a cap determined price of $4.17. So in this scenario, the investor is going to go for the discount price because the discount price actually was a better deal than the cap. It was just $4 a share. So even though the valuation cap in this case was lower than the actual pre-money valuation of, of $6 million and, and did yield a, a lower price than the later investors will pay, the discount was actually a better deal. So again, you never know for sure which way is going to be the lower price until you actually run the numbers. Now let's look at the post money safe. In this case, uh, it works a little differently. The post money cap uh, determines what each investor will pay. So let's say investor A invests $200,000 at a $4 million post money uh, cap. Well, what that means is the company's committing that sort of in this safe round of investments, take all the safe investments together, that investor is going to end up owning f at least 5% of the company uh, because 200,000 is 5% of 4 million. Now, later, after the company's made more headway, investor B makes an $800,000 investment, a much larger investment, but also at a larger post money cap of $8 million. 
So the commitment to that investor is they're going to own 10% uh, of the company at the end of the safe round because 800,000 is 10% of 8 million. So there's a commitment by the founders that these safe investors are going to own 15% of the company at the end of the safe investments. So let's run the numbers to see how much they'll pay for their stock. Let's say, again, the founders have a million shares. I'm not gonna allocate anything for a stock option pool for this example, because let's say that that's gonna happen later in the priced round. So the founders own the whole company at a million shares. They need to issue an additional 176,471 shares. So they'll have a total of 1.176 million shares in order for investors A and B to own a total of 15% of the company. How did I come up with 176,000? The investors need to own 15%. So I simply take 0.85 and divide that into a million. And that gives me the $1.176 million number. Uh, and that means those investors will own 15% of the company if you do the math. 176,471 is 15% of 1.176471 million. All right. So that means we can calculate now the price that each of these investors paid. Well, now we know that investor A gets 5% of that and investor B gets 10% of that. So do that math, figure out how many shares they have and divide that into the amount that they invested and you get their dollars per share. So if you do that math, investor A paid $3.40, investor B paid $6.80 for their shares. So that's what they paid in the safe investment round. Now they're going to look at what happened in the later priced round. And of course, if those investors paid less, they get that lesser price. So let's take a look at how that works out. So again, investor A paid $3.40, B paid $6.80. The series A price was $5. That's what those later investors paid based on their pre-money valuation agreement. All right, so again, we've got a 20% discount in place of $4. So investor B is going to go for the discount. Uh, investor A is going to stick with their $3.40 because that's a better deal than the discount. Now, just for comparison, let's say the discount written into the safe was a higher discount. Let's say it was 35%. Well, in that case, the 35 discount on $5 would be $3.25. Well, investor B will certainly go for that because again, that's a lot less than $6.80. But now investor A will also go for that discounted price because it's lower than the price they would pay uh, calculating it from the valuation cap. So again, another example where even if your valuation cap, in this case, the post money cap is below uh, the valuation that is in the later, uh, the pre money valuation that's in the later priced round, even though that's the case, the discount may still provide a better deal for the investor. What they get to do is calculate the price with the cap, calculate the price with the discount, and they take the smaller of those two numbers. So I hope that helped clarify exactly how discounts and valuation caps work together to determine what the investors pay for their stock. And again, of course, the idea from the investor point of view is they choose the lower of the two, the discount or the cap, so that they're paying less for their stock and hence for their investment, they get more shares of stock and more ownership in your company. If this was helpful, please click the like button and share it with other entrepreneurs. Leave a comment. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and click that notification bell so that you get notified when we have future videos. And this video is part of a sequence on early stage funding for startups. And a link to the entire playlist is right here. That's a wrap for this time. Thank you very much for watching.